Hey guys, Thomas Busby here with what has been easily the most requested video from you guys for me to make, how I edit my astro photos. Now I'm not saying this is the best way to edit astro photos, this is just how I do it. Now I've been making a little bit of a change from Lightroom to Capture One while using both, so if you want to know how to edit astro photos in just Lightroom or just in Capture One, I'll leave links for those down in the description below so you can jump ahead to whatever part you'd like to know most about. Also, as a little bit of like a pros and cons and just a little bit of my thoughts on Lightroom versus Capture One, I'll leave a link for that down in the description below as well if you'd like to just jump ahead to that part of the video. Now I need to stress, every single photo will be a little bit different. Your photo might require a little bit of tweaking, so there will be a little bit of leeway in the editing process, but without further ado, let's jump into it. So starting out in Lightroom, I set my contrast, my highlights and my whites all to about plus 20, and then negative 20 to both my shadows and my blacks. One setting that will be unique for every single photo is your exposure. I have to give mine a roughly a plus one bump as I like to shoot my astro photos on the darker side of things. Onto the tone curve, I lift our blacks a little just so they don't get to 100% black, then I drop the shadows and lift the mid-tone. Whereabouts on that tone curve you do this depends on that spike or lump in the background of your tone curve, but essentially what we're trying to do here is add a bit more contrast again, but without crushing the blacks. Once I've done that, I go back up to the Basics tab and turn on both Saturation and Vibrance up to 100. Yes, this is going to look real bad, but the reason I'm doing this is to help me find a nice neutral white balance. I shoot all my astro photos at roughly 4000K, but that can be a little bit too blue sometimes, so shift your temp and tint sliders left and right to try and make it look like so no one colour dominates the image. This is how you get a nice accurate white balance. And as a good guide, I normally tweak this until I get to the point where the galactic core just starts to pop out on its own a little. It seems like it's standing out from its surroundings. I then reset both saturation and vibrance back down to zero, and normally make the image just a little bluer, just to suit my taste. But you could make yours a little warmer, or a little more magenta, etc., just to suit your taste. I then add a bit of saturation back to the image to give it a bit of a pop on the colours. In this case, we'll say about plus 40. If you're using non-Fuji lenses, you can do a little bit of lens correction if you like, but if you're using Fuji lenses, I don't really think this is necessary. Now the final stage of global adjustments is noise reduction and sharpening, and this is the main reason I've been shifting over to Capture One as opposed to Lightroom. See, in the develop module, well actually it's a little bit hard to show with YouTube compression, but to give you an idea, I'm getting these flaws coming up in Lightroom that look a little bit like this. I'll, put, I'll, I'll Photoshop, Photoshop some onto the screen right now. And then develop module, I can hardly see these, but when I jump back to library, when I export the image, say, as a JPEG, these red, bandy, blotchy squares start to appear in my images. And it's a real pain because I can't see them in the, the develop module to remove them. And once you've been made aware of this, you'll start to see this pop up all over the place on Astro images, especially with those Fuji files, and I, it really bugs me. Whereas compared to Capture One, they're still there a little bit, nowhere near as bad, and I can see them in the editor to try and remove them a bit better. When it comes to sharpening, I drop my radius to about 0.6 as stars are very, very fine hyper detail and I don't want halos around them, and I crank my masking all the way up to about 90 plus. With noise reduction, I set both colour and smoothness to 80. This is real, real high to have those both at 80, but I found it was the only way to really remove those red square bandings that pop up in the images. And then I try to find a balance between luminance noise reduction and clarity. If you like for now, set both that luminance, noise reduction and clarity to about plus 30. Though this is one area I'd really encourage playing with, depending on if you want a more like hyper detailed astro sky, or more of a dreamy milky kind of astro sky. And just those two sliders there, plus the white balance tweaking from early on, are really I think the biggest way to add that little bit more of a personal preference, personal touch to your astro images. Once you've done all this, click on develop, new preset, click on everything in the first two columns aside from graduated and radial filters, give your preset a name, and then hit create. Finally, if I'm not doing a time lapse, I'll then add a radial filter to the galactic core with roughly a plus 0.5 bump to exposure and a negative 30 drop to blacks, just to add a bit more punch to the image. Plus, if you like, you can add a small amount of vignetting back to the image in the effects tab to say roughly minus 10. Now I need to stress that every single astro image will be a little bit different, and your personal preference you can really tweak through, like I said, that white balance and that noise reduction versus sharpening. That those two factors there, the white balance and the noise reduction sharpening, I would really encourage playing with for every single image uniquely. Okay, so moving on to Capture One, things work in a very similar way, but not so much so that you can just do everything the same as Lightroom. Exposure, you'll still need to adjust uniquely for every single image, and in my case I need to add about plus one as I shoot my images, like I said, a little bit darker. 
I add plus 8 to both brightness and contrast and saturation to roughly plus 16. Highlights and shadows I do very similar to editing in Lyrum going to a max of about plus 20. But unlike in Lyrum with my whites and my blacks I only go up to about a max of plus 10. Clarity will come back to to balance out my sharpening and noise reduction just like I did in my Lightroom workflow. And with the tone curve I do the exact same tone curve as Lightroom, lifting the blacks a little, dropping the shadows a smidge and raising the midpoints just to add that bit more contrast without crushing the blacks. Now when it comes to noise reduction in Capture One it's very different to Lightroom, so you still get a little bit of those red square bandings that I was getting in Lightroom, but nowhere near as bad and I can see them in as I'm editing in a live preview to remove them. One, it's so much less, yes you still get a little bit of artifacts in Capture One, Just it's high ISO photography, but that noise reduction and sharpening, the really big kicker factor for quality, is phenomenally better in Capture One versus Lightroom. For my personal taste, I like to lift the noise reduction all the way up to 80, reduce detail down to about 25, and leave single pixel at 10. And just like in Lightroom, I go back and forth between luminance and clarity, until I get that kind of look I am after, either hyper detailed or dreamy smooth. You can do the same white balance trick in Capture One by maxing out your saturation and then adjusting your tint and temperature until no one colour is dominant, then turning your saturation back down. You can save it as a preset again if you like by clicking on the Adjustments tab, the three little dots in a line, and then Save User Style. And finally, to add a bit more of a local punch to the galactic core, I add a radial adjustment layer, but instead of increasing exposure like in Lightroom, I add plus 5 to 10 to highlights, 5 to 10 to brightness, and negative 10 to 30 in blacks, just to add a bit more of a pop to the image. Now after using Capture One for only a few months and Lightroom for a good 9-10 years, there are a few differences I'd like to point out. And I'm, I'm assuming part of them are just due to that experience gap of being so experienced with Lightroom and making that transition to Capture One, but still, those differences are noticeable. And the biggest and most noticeable one is quality versus speed. See, Lightroom is definitely a far faster program to use as far as batch processing, batch exporting, and just loading previews, it is phenomenally quicker. But it is nowhere near as accurate and it doesn't hold up that detail, the quality anywhere near as good as Capture One does. Maybe I'm just doing batch processing wrong in Capture One, like I said, there is a very large experience gap here, but it is a speed versus quality kind of situation. So for me, I think when it comes to say time-lapse photography for that large batch work and say for my wedding work when I'm doing a lot more larger quantity photos, I'm probably going to stick with Lightroom just because I need that speed. Time is money. When I'm getting paid to do a job, the quicker I can do it, the more profit I make. But with my landscape work and when, say for my astro work and when I really care about image quality, say even for maybe one or two of the um, wedding photography images, just when, like I said, detail and noise reduction is key, Capture One really is in a whole other league. It was like going from 12 megapixels to 24 megapixels. It felt like doubling my image quality. Quality. <laughs> it felt like doubling my image quality. <laughs> so for now, I'm going to keep using both Capture One and Lightroom. They both have their pros and cons, and I can really appreciate the merits of both. Now, like I said at the start of the video, I'm not saying this is the best way to edit astro photos. This is just the way I do it. If you have a different preset, if you have a different way of editing astro photos, I'd love to hear about it down in the comments below. As always, guys, if you could like, share, and please subscribe, it would mean the world to me and help me keep sharing more content like this. But otherwise, until next time, I'll catch you next time. Yeah.